Debbie with Kip's Corner. Welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. I, uh, I was asked to show a step-by-step -step of how I created this little guy. And I've done a couple of these. Um, this is texture, color, um, encaustic wax on top. And then in this particular one, I let that completely cool and then I did a little cluster with the labels and then the metal butterfly. And there's a couple different ways you can do these and I am not an expert and I am not an encaustic um, artist in any way, shape or form. I just am a dabbler. But um, I was asked how, or if I could show sort of a step-by-step -step of how I've done these. And so I've got uh, five boards here. These small squares are, uh, these are four by four. So they're four inches by four inches. And so what I'm gonna do is just play, kind of play with these simultaneously. The very first step here, first of all, you need to make sure for the wax that it is a, um, a, a surface like a wood. It's not gonna work really well on canvas. Um, you gotta be careful with paper, that kind of thing. And so I'm just starting with a base wood. This has not been gessoed yet or anything. And the very, very first thing I'm going to do is to put some texture on the surface. I'm gonna start with the big one and I'm going to start with some paper texture paste. And I'm just gonna use a palette knife. It doesn't have to be metal. You can use um, a plastic palette knife, works too, but a palette knife does work the best. And you wanna get it on the back of your knife like this. Flip your knife over and then you can just start start putting it on and i'm going to put um not perfect not all the way to the edges i um, just going to sort of scrape some on here randomly all right this is sand so i'm going to use this fatter palette knife here and i'm just going to run some sand Ooh, this one's gonna be thick. That's okay though. You could do these same techniques pretty much on, um, you know, on a tag. Uh, just make sure it's a tag that has a sturdy, you know, it's a chip, more of a chipboard tag. that's nice and sturdy. Um, this doesn't have to be on, what I'm doing now does not have to be on wood. There we go. I like that one. You could also, for example, um, you know, put a, a base down, you could put a base down a collage paper or something like that, and then your texture. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different, a lot of different ways you can do this. Okay, on the last one, I think it might be fun to use a stencil with some modeling paste. So let me get that out. Let's see, I'm gonna position this fairly evenly. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, let's be honest. And I'm just going to sort of push down on that and then brush it over across. You don't need it to be overly thick. But you wanna get that push down into your stencil. This particular modeling paste is fairly thick. Do use a stencil on this one as well, but I'm only going to use the stencil in parts or pieces. So I'm gonna go, um, and I'm gonna use modeling paste on this one too. And I'm just going to sort of randomly put bits and pieces down. So we'll put some there and perhaps some over here. Better. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, this is dry enough already, to, um, I'm gonna add the paper texture in and around those stencil parts and pieces. Uh, let me use this one. And this is, you know, I'm making a mess, it's okay. Uh, let's see, let's go from here. And in some cases, I'm gonna go over my stencil a little bit. 
I'm not gonna smash it down, but I'm also not gonna worry about whether or not I do. So I'm sort of blending that stencil into the background. And I think I'll like it better. The point here is just play, you know, just play. Sometimes you like what you do right away and sometimes you kind of have to, eh, you know, and I could have scraped the whole thing off really, honestly, it would not have hurt anything. But instead, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on there and just incorporate it a little bit differently. So there we go. And that'll create some cool kind of crevices down in there for, uh, for color. So I'm actually looking forward to that, to seeing how that works out. Okay, next step uh, is to just basically let this all sit and dry overnight. And so I will be back once that happens and um, we've got something to, to work with. Okay, we've got our texture dry, and so now we're going to just put some gesso on it. I'm gonna go ahead and use white gesso on all of these, because the step after this is going to be um, coloring, and so I'm gonna start with a white gesso base. I'm just going to generously apply some white gesso to all of these. And I'm going to get the sides as well. This will provide a base, um, will prepare the surface for the painting portion of it, coloring. Um, I may use acrylic paints, I may use some different things, but um, bottom line is the gesso will get that surface prepped. So just a, a coat, it doesn't, you know, I say generous, it doesn't have to be thick. You just need need to get it covered. And one coat is probably plenty. Okay, I'm gonna keep um, going around these and getting the gesso on them. And then the next step after that will be to put some color on them. So I'll be back once they're dry. Okay, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So basically I've just got some Payne's Gray here, acrylic paint, and I've also got some gray blue acrylic paint. I'm gonna start there. And I've just really watered it down and now I'm just sort of um, adding it all over. I'm trying to get it down into the cracks and crevices here. And then I will, um, I'll add a lot of water and roll it off. Get a little lighter in here. So this will be more of a grayish, bluish grayish tone piece. All right, and I'm gonna add some water. And I'm just playing. Um, you don't have to use acrylic paint on this. You can use um, really any kind of colorant. You could use magicals, you could use infusions, you could use um, you know any sorts of different coloring, colorized things that will color. The only thing I don't think I would use at this stage is probably wax. Um, and this can be messy. I just wanna really kinda of get, just get a nice base down. That's pretty. I like the darker colors in some of those parts. Um, so let me, um, let me dry that off and then I'll go from there. Just remember the key with coloring is that with each layer you do, you do want to dry it. That way that'll prevent getting some mud. So that's really the important thing here is to dry after every layer. All right, I think that's probably dry enough. I've got a couple wet spots here, but I don't think that'll affect anything. And now what I'm gonna do is just add just a tiny touch of this blue in a couple of spots. It's really more for interest than anything else. Um, so I'm going to put some in my, my base here, and then I am going to, let me get that brush out of the way, I am going to thin that down with water. I think I'm just going to, oops, I'm just going to drip some 
some, some drips here in a couple spots. So maybe here. And let's do some down here. And then I want to do one more, one more drippy spot, maybe here. I think that's good. Uh, I don't know, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of water on there. And then that'll spread around. Just turn it a little. And, uh, yeah, let's do a little bit up here too. Just a tiny bit right through here. There we go. Let me. So at this stage, you're just playing. There is no right or wrong. Um, you just play until you like it. And so you're just adding your color and playing. And I just wanted to get, you know, I wanted to get some of that lighter color up in there, some of that blue. I really like this down here. I'm gonna get it just a little bit darker down here. There. And this is pretty too. Let's get it a little bit darker here. And then I'm just gonna spray that. And see here, um, I got too much. I don't want that much there, so I'm just gonna dab that off. Dab that off. There we go. Hold it up and look at it. Make sure you like it. And I do, I think that's pretty. I'm gonna dry that. And while you're working on the background, you, you do, you know, keep in mind where you might put your focal point or your pieces, depending on what it is you're going to do. Um, so just, you know, you think through where that might be. Okay, from here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and um, make my sides completely solid black. Or actually, I think what I'll do is use the Payne's Gray, since it's already here. You don't have to do this, um, but given that I'm going to put some wax on this next, um, I just want to go ahead and get that edge darkened. And then later I'll go through with some oil probably or some type of um, something, oil or ink or something to, to edge. So I'm okay if it kind of comes up on the edge a little bit. I like that. All right. Here we go. That one is now, uh, I think I'm done painting that one. So I'm gonna set that aside and let that dry. And I like that, I like this blues and grays, pretty colors. Okay, next up, let's do another one. But this time, um, this time I'm going to use infusions to paint. Infusions are a powder that you sprinkle on um, they are by Paper Artsy, and you can put as little or as a lot as you like. And they have, they're infused with walnut crystals, so they have a brown undertone. Um, there's different colors. I'm using Rusty Car. And you can see all the different colors that come through in there. So this is just a little bit different technique from the acrylic paints. They're all, none of them, you know, there's not one way to do this. But I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the other one. Let's just roll this around a little bit. Let's see, let's roll it off that edge. Maybe get that edge a little darker. There we go. That's nice. Okay, let me dry that. Again, you want to dry between layers. This is the same as any other kind of coloring technique that you might do. If you dry between layers, that will help prevent, you know, creating mud. Some people want mud, that's okay too. If you did, you could just keep going from here and while it's wet and add more color. Um, but 
think I would prefer not to have mud because I think the next color I'm going to go um, with this one is going to be green. So let me get this dry and we'll get some green on here. I've got two infusion greens. One is olive green and one is the sage. Um, the sage is a little lighter. So I think I'll actually gonna go ahead and put the olive green and I'm gonna sprinkle this in some, some very specific spots. Um, I'm not gonna put a lot on here, but I'm gonna hit some of the lighter areas. Like so, there we go, maybe a little bit right there. Okay, and now I'm gonna spray where I put the color. And I'm gonna do a little bit of moving around. Not a lot here. dab a little bit of this up and let that soak back down there we go maybe dab a little bit of this let it soak back down nice okay now I'm gonna get some I want this to sort of drip there we go there, see that drip right through there? That's what I wanted. And then it looks like, let's see, let me get this, let me get another brush. I just wanted a little brush here um, and I just went, I got some, there we go. I got a spot right there that just was bright, kind of bright white that I wanted to dab dab through. All right, let's let's dry that and see if we want any more color on it. I like that. That's a neat, that's got a neat texture to it. Nice. Okay, that's just about dry. So I see an area right here that is a little weird to me. I'm going to spray that and try to get that to move a little bit just had almost a straight line to it that I didn't like. There we go. I think that might be better. Um, the infusions, you know, that they, they are reactive with water. So, um, so even though it's dry, you can kind of get them to, you can get them to move again. Had a weird sort of straight line effect to it that I didn't love. All right, some really pretty color going on here. Nice. I like the lights and darks. And that is just about dry. Okay, second one, done. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm going to use sort of my, my browns as a little bit of gold. I've got burnt sienna, umber, and ochre, and liquid acrylics. So I'm just going to, let me clear some of this out of my way. Okay, here we go. This is um, burnt sienna. So I'm gonna go back to more of a brown here. And I'm just gonna get a ton of, just a lot of water on this. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move it around but I'm also gonna move it around with my brush because I don't want those great big blobs there. I do want it to be a very variated, <laughs> variated color, but I don't want blobs. So, here we go.
Nice. I like that variation. So far, so good. But I'm going to dab off just a tiny bit of that. There we go. Okay. And I'm spraying those darker areas one more time. I dabbed off a little bit too much. There we go. I want to get some more down in here. Um, I forgot which brush I was using. This one. There we go. All right, I'm going to dry that. And then I'll come back with another color. I think I want to put a little bit of umber in. I'm going to put the umber in my uh, two, three drops in my tray, and then I'm going to add water to it because now what I'm going to do is an umber wash over the whole thing. So I want this to be pretty, pretty watery, pretty runny. This is a pretty color. And I'm just gonna dab it pretty much all the way around here. I'm gonna start with the edges, the outer edges. And then I'm gonna come in a little bit until what I've mixed is gone. And then I'll spray a little bit. There we go. That does have a tiny bit of a green tint to it. I'm going to spray up here and drip down. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Okay. Now I'm going to dry. Okay, I want to put one more color on here, but I want it to be uh, ochre. And I'm going to concentrate that just right in the middle. So I'm going to drip directly on here. Just one, let's see, two drops. Okay. And then I'm going to spray. I'm trying to keep my water right there where that is, right there in the center. And now I'm going to move it around, try to get it okay. Now I want to, <clears throat> let's see, I want a thinner brush. Go ahead. I'm going to try to get a thinner brush here. Okay, because now what I want to do is I want to take this and I'm going to pull it down here. like that. I'm going to pull this here and up here. And just sort of follow that pattern. It's already in there and it, and it doesn't, this does not have to be perfect, nor will it be, even if I wanted it to be. Let's see right here. <clears throat> nice. Now I'm gonna just gonna swirl that around a little bit. Let me get a little bit of this. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to pat that up a little bit. And pat it up here. Here we go. And voila. Now I'm just going to pat just a tiny, tiny bit. Just pick up a little bit of that on the very, very top surface. Don't want to pick up too much. Sorry if my head's in the way. There we go. 
Now it's got sort of a, yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. All right, so that one I think is ready to go. Yeah. The next step is completely optional and I'm not an expert. I'll show you what I do, but I also wanna caution you that when it comes to encaustics, there are some um, pre precautions that, that have to be taken. Um, I am not um, an, a teacher of encaustics and so I will not dive into those other than to tell you that you need to, to dive into them yourself. I'm just coming in the edge here just a little in a couple spots. But that is, that will be my next step. I'm gonna let these sit overnight and then I will be back with the next step. Okay, we've got our color down. It's all very dry. It's actually been a couple days, so it's definitely dry. I've got uh, some encaustic wax melting now. It's not quite ready to go yet. I'm not going to go into what I've learned um, in my playtime about encaustic waxes. Um, there's a lot of safety precautions. You have to be in a well-ventilated area. You probably can't hear it, but I have a fan running. Um, you, there's certain temperatures that you want to hit and, and et cetera. And, and I'm not an expert, so I don't want to really give anyone any information about it. Other than I'll show you what I'm going to do next in this step, since I promised to do sort of a full step-by-step -step of how I created um, the last board video, a couple of videos back, I think. So there are a ton of videos on YouTube about encaustic and how to work with it and set it up and whatnot and, and what to use. One of the things um, that you'll learn is that you have to fuse the wax after each layer. So basically, I just come back in here and get it heated up. And that does a few things. It fuses the wax so it sets, but it also kind of helps even it out as we go along. And that milkiness will clear up. It won't stay milky like that. My pretty bright colors should, should come through nicely. I'm gonna heat this up probably a little further than I might need to otherwise. For a couple reasons, it kind of, I got it on there gloppy the first time and I wanna push some of that wax off to the side just a little bit. I'm okay with it um, dripping off the sides. I actually like that. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit. And you can see it will cool down pretty quickly. And as soon as that layer is cool, I'll go ahead and put another layer on. Okay, all of the boards have been waxed, textured, and then colored, and then waxed. And so the next step is to, I'm just gonna create sort of an assemblage. I've got some things gathered up. Um, and just what I do is when I'm at estate sales or um, oh, garage sales even, or just in my garage and I see things, or even new items actually, and I see things that, that I think are interesting or um, fun that might play well into just any kind of assemblage. I just grab it and I have this collection. And then periodically I'll do like a big rust bath where I take a bunch of things and see if how well they rust. And then some I don't, and so I kind of have a mix of stuff. And when I get ready to do a project like this, I just go to that stash and I just grab things that sort of interest me. Sometimes I create a theme. Um, sometimes it's just an eclectic mix of stuff. Sometimes it's all rust, sometimes, you know, it just, just depends on the mood I'm in, really. This is one where after I got the coating of wax on, I went in with just a poker tool like this, just a poker tool, and drew along some of the lines. And then I, uh, I also stamped a little bit and then went back in with a dark green oil and pigment stick and filled in 
the cuts and the marks and the indents and the things that I made. So I've got this cool, it almost looks like a map, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, so now I'm gonna work on creating an assemblage on top of this. And I'm gonna start with, um, I'm gonna start with this piece. This is from an old, one of the old wooden rulers. Um, I just broke that piece off to shorten it a little bit, sanded that edge just a tiny bit. And I think I'm gonna put it right about there and that goes nicely with some of the lines and things that are in here. And so I use um, either, and this is a, a Liquitex Ultra Matte Gel, and the Ultra is, it's a thicker, heavier base paste, or I will use um, my Heavy Body Gel from Finnabar. Either one of these works very nicely. The Heavy Body Gel from Finnabar is a gloss finish, and so if I, you know, if I don't want any um, of the glue to kind of peek through, I use the, the mat, so I use them both pretty much equally. So I'm just gonna, gonna just put, I use, this is a silicone sort of little spatula, and I just dab that on there, and I get it on pretty good because I'll show you after I dab it on um, that I clean, kind of clean it up. So I want more is merrier. <laughs> See, I think I'm going to put that right, right about there. Yeah, let me see if I can get it straight now. And I'm squishing it down. And then I take another silicone. This is a pointy silicone, um, I guess, brush, tool, spatula. And I just wipe that up. I usually have a damp rag over here with me. I just go along the edge there, wipe that up. And if it's a piece that has, um, oh, wobbly, you know, that's not flat on the bottom, I will clamp it down. But if, if, if it's just a flat piece like this one, I don't really need to clamp it down. I just need to get that glue on there nicely. And sometimes I have to glue a piece and walk away, let it dry. Um, so sometimes the gluing part takes a while. And I just kind of keep cleaning this up. And if I clamp it down, I can usually clean up around the clamp. So, oops. And I don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't want globs of glue showing on my piece. But I also have to be careful not to take so much off that, oops, that uh, there's not any glue on the bottom. <laughs> and it does dry clear, so it's okay when you're gluing, you know, if you still see some white. Uh, I've got that cleaned up. Now I'm just going to make sure that it's straight before I stop messing with it. Or at least straight enough. It doesn't again. It doesn't have to be perfect. Move that a little higher. There we go. All right. Since I moved that up, I got a little bit of excess here. I'm going to clean up. I take my time with this part. Well, I take my time with most of it actually. Um, I'm in no hurry. I'm, I'm okay with um, you know one of these pieces taking multiple days to create. There we go. Okay, from there, um, I knew that I wanted that piece there. When I found it, I thought, oh, that's just perfect. It just it just goes so nicely. Now from here, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Um, so that's why I went ahead and glued that one down. I knew that the chances are I'm not gonna really put anything up underneath it. I'm gonna pile um, up above it or you know around it. And so that's sort of my my main piece. Sometimes I don't have do that. Sometimes I do. It just depends. 
um, like on this one, I arranged everything before I glued anything, and I just wanted an interesting sort of arrangement. Um, one of the things I'll point out too, is you notice there's an, uh, an uneven number of knobs here. Um, and so I think uh, keeping things, keeping your compositions in uneven numbers is a, just a good practice to get into. The, that, that ties into one of the rules, one of the threes is that um, pieces grouped in three or uneven numbers are more attractive to the eye than pieces grouped in evens. Okay, uh, that said, I'm just gonna start grabbing and playing. I don't, like I said, I don't really know. I've got some more things over here. I don't really know what I'm going to do. And I like putting things together that don't go together, like throwing a random sort of surprise in there somewhere. I am in love with this piece right here. Something about, something about the way that sits on there. I like. Okay, here they are. They're done. Um, these are the five boards that I worked on throughout this video. I'll show you some up close and personal here on these. Um, this one has the encaustics on top. That stencil in the background. There you go. And this is just that ultramarine blue and I think it's violet in the liquid acrylic by Finnebar. And then these are Finnebar dragonflies. They're metal. And I've added a layer. I put a uh, coat of gesso on top, black gesso, and then a layer of the, I think it's Heather, metallic wax. It's a purplish, a pale, oh, lavender. It's more of a lavender kind of color. Very subtle, but I love it. Um, I love the way that came out. And there's the dragonflies. Next up is, this is my personal favorite. Um, I'm going to keep this one and add it to my own collection. This one, I took um, a couple things. I used a poker tool, just a regular Tim Holtz po poker tool. And I sort of dug into the soft wax following some of the color lines that had been created when I added the color to it. And then I softened the wax and stamped it with a stamp here. You can see kind of that texty looking, not a clean stamp at all, which um, there's more up in here, right there. Um, but th that's what I wanted. I wanted sort of a, it's half there, half not there kind of look. And then of course this has the encaustics on top and all the pieces here except for the optometrist lens. And, and these are watchmaker parts here. These are all uh, rusted pieces of varying sort. This was one of those metal, or um, excuse me, wood rulers that folds up, the old time rulers. And so, yeah, so this, this is my favorite. And the encaustic in the back isn't really, really smooth. It's sort of wavy and bumpy. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see that or not, um, but, but this one, hands down, this one was my favorite. Next up is this one. This is the one that was modeling paste through the stencil in the background and then colored, of course, and then um, I added a layer of encaustics. And the encaustics on this one is a, a, that layer is thinner. And so some of this texture comes through, especially you can see kind of down in here. Um, and some of it is, is a little more smooth through here. And so I really like the way that turned out. And these are all knobs and handles and pulls. Um, so there's what, uh, five of them on there. They were all different colors. I did put, um, let's see, on this one, this one, this one, and the base on here of this one. I painted them with black gesso first and then used a brass um, antique or a, a metallic wax on them. And I just wanted to sort of pull them all together in that same color family. And this one was sort of close to that color already and I just added a little bit of wax on that as well. To, again, just to pull them all together into that same color family. And so there's that one. This one is the blue. It's a gorgeous color. It's very, it had very much of an ice kind of look to it. Um, and so I just, <laughs> it's just an eclectic mix of stuff that I, uh, assembled on here. I've got the metal corners. This is a piece of crystal from an old chandelier. Um, this is that, this is actually the same, I think. Yeah, these are 
two knobs, these two knobs are from the same package, those two knobs. And this says, for I am the dreamer, life is the dream, which I just love. And then an old tarnished spoon. I did not clean it up, but it's a, a real silver tarnished spoon. And so that's just sort of the um, weird, uh, fun, eclectic. <laughs> this last one is the only one that I used beeswax on my layer instead of um, encaustics. Encaustics is a mix of beeswax and resin. This was just straight beeswax on the back and it is a, a thinner coat. You can see it is a not, it is, still has a sheen to it and can kind of be buffed up, but it's a softer, it's a softer background, but it mutes and softens up that background. And I really like the way that worked. And I like the rust pieces with the rust color in the back. Lots of texture on this one that is still coming through, you know, that wasn't covered up with the wax. And then these are just, this is just again, a, a mix of weird pieces, a hinge, a rusted flower. That's a melange pebble on top, if you can see that. That's a Tim Holtz piece that I rusted. This little piece right there, there's three of them on here, there and there, those are watchmaker parts. Um, this is a number from, um, uh, from the Dollar Tree, from a set from the Dollar Tree that I rusted, Rusty Washer. This is also a Tim Holtz metal label that I rusted up, and this is a watchmaker's vial. Looks like there's a washer back here in the background. Oh, and this vial still has the parts in it, if you can see them moving around in there. Um, but it still has the parts in it. And then some old, grungy, rusted up fabric in the background. Then, before I put the, the pieces together, I stamped some numbers in the background. Got a little heavier here. This, there you can see it, is lighter. And then there's sort of a medium depth here. So the numbers are stamped on there three different times, sort of three different um, depths, if you will. And then I added some pigment into the crevices, just like I did on this one, different color pigment, but added pigment into the crevices. And yeah, so that's that one. So, I said in my title that there is a surprise connected to this video. And so, the surprise is that I realized um, earlier this week that I am about oh, 80 uh, or so subscribers away from 3,000 subscribers, which is so, so, so exciting for me because that's a, I don't know, that's just a milestone, you know? And um, so I'm really excited for that. And in honor of and in celebration of reaching 3,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away these three boards um, representing a board for each thousand subscribers that I've reached. However, I don't know when that's gonna happen. I don't know when I'm gonna hit 3,000. Um, it could be, you know, it could be a week, it could be three months, it could be four months from now. Who knows? I have no way of knowing. So what I'm gonna do is ask that you, uh, well, uh, subscribe. So we'll start there. Be a subscriber. Comment on this video. Uh, I tell you what, why don't you tell me which of the three you um, would love to win. This, we'll call this number six. We'll call this blue spoon. And we'll call this knobs. So six spoon and knobs tell me which is your favorite comment on this video and whenever i hit 3k i don't know like i said don't know when that'll be but whenever that is i will come back to this video and i'll do um, some random draws from the comments on this video so um good luck i hope um three people that really really want them win and um, i hope you've enjoyed this video and have taken perhaps something away that the process is so, so simple. And I think I tried to show you that you can really, really achieve um, a variety of different looks doing the same basic technique. It doesn't have to be on wood and you don't have to use the encaustics either. Um, you, but you can start with a base, you can start with a book board, you can start with chipboard tags, you can start with um, really, really anything that's got some substance to it Start with your texture, get your gesso on there, 
play with color and then play with whatever your theme or your grouping or your assemblage um, is going to be and just have fun with it. So, um, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it has been helpful. Let me know and um, I'm more than happy to do more like this if it has been helpful at, at all. And don't forget to comment. I'll be back uh, to this video whenever that 3K happens and we'll, we'll give some things away. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, I want you to know I really, really appreciate your support. I'll be back soon. Bye-bye.